Hi, Robin Beaumont here. We're going to be looking quickly at the Man Whitney U statistic, um, seeing how we carry out the analysis in SPSSS, R Commander, and R. This is a quick how to do it guide. Here is some data in SPSSS. Um, notice that we have the grouping variable. We're talking about independent observations here. So we have 17 cases providing one value each, one result. If we look in the variable view, you can see we have two variables, the result variable and the grouping variable. If we click on the values, you can see I've created two labels, one which is the control group, one is the experimental group. So if we go back, we can see that the first result belongs to the control group, whereas for case number 10, that result is for the experimental group. First of all, before we carry out the Van Whitney U, we should really check the data. And the best way to do that is carry out um, analysis, descriptive statistics, explore. And then dependent variable, which is a result, is the result, and the grouping variable is a factor list. Click OK. Make sure we've got both selected. And here are our results. So we have the control group, a mean value of 109, and the experimental group, we have a mean value of 124. With, if we notice, standard deviation of 6 there and 10 there. Also, if we look further down, we will see a box plot. We can see here that 50% of the scores do not overlap with 50% of the scores in the experimental group, so probably we'll get a significant result. So the median value, that's not the mean, the median is around 109, we could check with the results above, and that one, 124. All right, now let's carry out the actual analysis. Analyze non-parametric tests. Um, you can choose independent samples there, but I find it easier going to legacy dialogues. Legacy dialogues, two independent samples. So it's non-parametric. That's analyze non-parametric tests. Legacy dialogues, two independent samples. Click OK. Then we have the usual type of dialog box. Result, well, that's the test variable, the dependent variable. Grouping variable, which we'll group. Define our groups, so we know it's one and two. Continue. And then we notice it's actually chosen for us automatically the manner with the U test. Um, in the options here and exact buttons, and we need one of the options button, but the exact button, we've got the option here to actually find an exact value um, rather than a value based upon um, normal distribution theory, which works fine for large samples, but not really for small samples below, say, 30 to 50. So if we've got the option to do this, it's better to use exact. Click. Continue and run it. And here is our result. So we've got eight results in the control group, I'm sorry, nine in the control group and eight in the experimental group, giving us a total of 17. And we have here the traditional p value, that's this asymptotic p value of 0.007 and the exact significance value there, 0.005. Notice I'm using two-tailed values. Let's carry out the same analysis now in our commander. First of all, we need to load the library R commander. So type in library, all lowercase, then 
uppercase R, CMDR. And now we have our, our commander graphical interface to our. Let's load the data. We we'll use the same data set we had in SPSS. Data, import data, SPSS data file. Call it my data frame. Once we've found the data, check that it's correct by clicking Edit Data Set button. There's the data we have in my data frame. It's fine, exactly the same as in SPSS. Right to run the analysis, statistics, non parametric tests, two sample with COTS and tests. So it's statistics, non parametric tests. Two sample with cots and tests. Click on that. We have only two variables in the data frame and it's chosen the right variables. Groups is the grouping variable, the response variable is the result. You can think of those as columns or vectors, which they really are in R. Two sided p value automatically selected. The default value means that it actually produces an exact value, p-value, when there's less than 50 observations. Um, this is normal approximation when there's more than 50. You can actually demand the exact value order, but regardless of sample size, just by clicking that. OK. And there's our result. p-value of 0 0.007. I should also mention that you can actually carry out graphs quite easily in R Commander. For example, uh, the graphs that we did in SPSS, we can duplicate in R Commander quite simply. Graphs, box plot, variable, there's only one that you can choose that's a proper variable, result variable. Click on the plot by groups button, and it's chosen the only other variable in the data set grouping. OK, click OK. And there is a box plot. Might not look quite as nice as an SPSS, but it does the job fine. Carrying out the same analysis in R directly, we first of all create a vector called control with our values in it. We use a concatenate operator to put it together. And then we do the same. The treatment group. There we are. Notice that I've used this NA value here. This is because when we want to add these to a data frame, they have to be the same length. There'll be one less element in the treatment group if we did it that way without the NA. Then we create the data frame. I'll call it my data frame. There we are. My data frame gets that function to create it and the two vectors, control and treatment. We can have a look at what's in my data frame quite simply by typing the name. And because we want to refer to those two vectors directly in the data frame, we attach it to the current workspace. There. Right, now to run the analysis, we just type in the name of the test we want, Wilcox test, which is the same as the manual U if they're not paired data, which it isn't because we haven't specified. We do not want paired data. Treatment group and control group values. And there's a thing called correction, which is to do with large samples. And we say we don't want this correction to be carried out on our data. OK. And there's a result. 0 0.007. And now it's exactly the same as we got in SPSSS. Notice this is not the exact value because it says here a warning message. You cannot compute exact value because there's ties in the data. So there's ties in the data, R cannot work at um, an exact value. Um, so that is the asymptotic value effect, which is what we got in, um, in SPSS as well. 
and also if you'll notice in our commander um, if you look to the bottom of the our command window you notice this message also appearing there we want to confuse you at the time if we actually ask it to run with the correction we'll get a different p-value there we are so this time I'm saying use the correction approach to the p-value here we have got 0 0.008 which we haven't achieved before so it's best really always to check to see if there's ties and if there is then make sure the correction isn't applied to understand what exactly is going on look at my document on the website number eight assessing ranks there I have three explanations of the particular value, the U value or W value as it appears in R. If you click on the degree enfoldment explanation, we'll see I've got an example here of two data sets, each with four or five values in them, and when they're completely separated, you get a very low U value. When they completely overlap, we have high u value um, ignore the other u values um, from 11 to 16 it's explained in the document but they would actually go down in terms of the statistical value of u and you'll see here what we get is the distribution of the u value under the theory that they both come from the same population this population is not necessarily parametric that is it doesn't have a mean or a standard deviation, it's not defined by that. It could be any shape, this population. All we're saying is it's two samples from a population. And that's what happens. We get a probability of a high U value most of the time and a probability of a low value much less frequently if they come from the same population, both their samples. So we've carried out the Man Whitney U statistic and test in. SPSS, R Commander, and R. In R, um, we just typed in Wilcox.test, then the names of our two vectors, and then we specified if we wanted a confidence interval, and also, remember, if there were ties, we had a problem that you actually couldn't work out an exact p-value, and then it applied a correction. Um, we don't really want that correction, so we put in correct equals false to avoid that. And that will give us a asymptotic normal kind of p-value instead of the exact one rather than the corrected version we haven't talked about effect size or power or sample size you'll find more details of those three things in my document effect size is often simply measured in this instance as the difference between the medians by 